I believe the committee uh, gave the uh, award to me for, for two distinct reasons. One was that uh, historically I was involved in basic research and clinical research demonstrating the use of immunosuppression, particularly cyclosporin, which became the foundational treatment for rejection in organ transplantation. And then secondly, demonstrating that type 1 diabetes was not a diabetes as a result of infection, but was an autoimmune disorder, which we treated and demonstrated that in fact we could induce remission. The second has been my passion for the last two decades, and, and that is um, delivering on the promise of medical research in this country through translation medicine. And translation medicine simply is taking it from the bench all the way through to the bedside. And so whether it is the teaching of how you take a discovery through to the bedside, finding the capital to facilitate that, creating an institution in which translation medicine is the raison d'etre. I've tried to make Canadian research of practical benefit to the Canadian public. It's our responsibility and I think it's our great future. The first achievement was really to uh, clone, in our jargon, to clone the oestrogen receptor. The oestrogen receptor is a receptor which is involved in physiological and pathological uh, conditions. For instance, it's involved in, uh, in breast cancer and some other cancer uh, or uh, endocrinological uh, disease. And we, having cloned it, then we discovered that it belonged to a large family of similar receptors, not only the receptor which are already known, like the progesterone receptor, the androgen receptor, the male receptor, but also receptors from vitamin D, receptor for vitamin A derivatives, receptors for, over met for metabolites, which are part of a general metabolism, and all, all these receptors from a large family of about uh, of exactly 48 receptors in human, and the fact that we have identified them, that we know them, will allow to synthesize compound which could counteract their effect. Uh, my lab discovered a uh, protein called hypoxia-inducible factor 1, or HIF-1, uh, that controls the body's responses to low oxygen. And uh, the factor is very important because it allows cells to uh, adapt to not having enough oxygen, uh, allows, for example, your body to make more red blood cells to bring oxygen to your tissue, uh, to make more blood vessels to carry the blood cells to your tissue. Um, uh, helps your body to breathe faster if you're not getting enough oxygen. So all the responses that the, the body coordinates to try to uh, be, ensure that all the cells have enough oxygen um, are controlled one way or another by uh, HIF-1. There are um, important implications for a number of diseases. So for example, in um, ischemic cardiovascular disease where the blood flow to the heart, for example, is impaired, it may be possible to stimulate new blood vessel growth and to uh, uh, improve the care of people with uh, uh, coronary artery disease. Uh, in the case of uh, cancers, cancers uh, themselves stimulate blood vessel formation and there, by inhibiting HIF-1, we may be able to block tumor growth. So really, the most common causes of uh, mortality in uh, U.S. and Canada uh, may be uh, amenable to targeting uh, by our understanding of HIF-1 and its uh, biology. My work has been in uh, tropical medicine and in particular the investigation of a remarkable series of 
uh, plant-derived compounds which came from China. They were the product of a Chinese herb, which in Chinese would be called Jinghao Su and we call Artemisinin. And these turn out to be the best anti-malarial drugs. And our work in Southeast Asia showed that these drugs could save lives in severe malaria and that, that together with other drugs in something we call artemisinin in combination treatment were simply the best treatments for the killing malaria, the falciparum malaria that today kills about 800,000 people every year. And these, this artemisinin in combination treatment uh, has become the treatment of choice throughout the world. So our work identified the uh, molecular circuitry that allows cells and tissues to sense whether they're receiving enough oxygen and to respond appropriately. So this mechanism, for example, becomes critical when cells or tissues are not receiving sufficient amounts of oxygen, such as might occur during a heart attack or a stroke. Very early on, we learned that a number of cancers, and in particular kidney cancers, have co-opted this sensing mechanism for their own uses. And this information has already led to the approval of six new drugs for the treatment of kidney cancer. In addition, there are a number of new drugs being developed now that are aimed at improving oxygen delivery or allowing cells to survive until oxygen delivery can be restored for diseases such as heart attack, a stroke, and anemia. I trained as a kidney physician and I was interested in the uh, mechanism by which the kidney uh, regulates a hormone, erythropoietin, in accordance with blood oxygen levels. And uh, what we discovered rather unexpectedly uh, was this mechanism was throughout all animal cells and did all sorts of things uh, in response to low oxygen to protect cells and tissues against low oxygen levels. Now, low oxygen levels are an integral part of many, many human diseases, uh, cancer, vascular disease, heart disease, lung disease. So the hope now is that uh, this uh, insight into the basic mechanism of oxygen signaling could be uh, used to design uh, new interventions, drugs uh, that might assist in the therapy of these diseases. As you know, the uh, brain uh, receives and transmits and uh, processes information uh, using small electrical signals. And uh, our work uh, led to discovery of the molecules in the brain that generate those electrical signals uh, that are conducted along nerves and also the molecules in the brain that begin synaptic transmission, uh, which allows the electrical signal to move from one nerve cell to the other. The molecules that we discovered, which are called the sodium and calcium channels, uh, are involved in a number of diseases and they're important drug targets for therapy. Uh, for example, genetic mutations in the sodium and calcium channels uh, cause inherited forms of epilepsy, uh, migraine headache, chronic pain, cardiac arrhythmia, and periodic paralysis of the skeletal muscles. Uh, and drugs that act on sodium and calcium channels are used in the treatment of epilepsy, chronic pain, and cardiac arrhythmia. Uh, we hope that our work will help to understand these diseases better and perhaps more important, uh, help to develop new therapies and new drugs that will be used in the future.